Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Having discussed the reliability of a component or a device, where we were all assuming that it is a single piece, uh, a single component. Uh, let me now talk about reliability of systems, where there are more than one component. So, here again, uh, the treatment will be simple. So, that is why I have studied in the beginning only, that very simple cases will be considered. But, uh, once you learn the basic technique, then you can always divide, uh, uh, you know, break up a complex device into uh, smaller systems and then you can try to uh, compute the reliability of the whole system right so uh, let's see we can we now here uh, i'm just beginning with this uh, simple case that two components are hooked up in series so this is how they are right c1 c2 they're two components and they are in series and so um, for the in order for the system to work both components must be functioning okay they are in series right uh, may be performing different tasks uh, for the uh, whole device. And so, uh, they both have to function. If any one of them fails, then the uh, system will fail. Okay. So, this is the whole idea. They are working in series. Now, uh, we also make the assumption and of course, this is important. Otherwise, uh, things will get complicated and we have uh, learnt uh, methods for handling uh, dependence also. But, uh, uh, Right now, we just assume the independence to show you the uh, how to develop, how to compute the reliability of the system. So, if they are uh, functioning independently, then the reliability R t of the system can be obtained in terms of the reliability R 1 t and R 2 t of the two components. Right. So, I am just denoting the reliability of the first component by R 1 and the reliability of the uh, second component. Oh, okay, I should probably write just this small t to choose the value of the yeah okay so therefore i can compute the reliability of the system in terms of the reliabilities r1 t and r2 t of the two components right and this is a simple uh, uh, computation we have already done it so many times so here you are asking for probability t greater than t right and this would be this can this what what it means is that uh, your T 1 should be great that means, T 1 is the lifetime of the first component and T 2 is the lifetime of the second component. Then we are asking for probability T 1 greater than T and probability T 2 greater than T. Both must be functioning up to time T. If we are saying that the system for, uh, for the system the uh, functioning time or the is uh, you know greater than or equal to T. Fine. So, and now because of independence, this joint probability can be written as uh, probability T 1 greater than T into probability T 2 greater, greater than T. Right? This is because the, we have assumed that the two uh, components are functioning independently. Right? And so, uh, this is R 1 T into R 2 T. Right? Now, you, because these are probabilities, so they are each each of the numbers is less than 1. So, therefore, this product would be less than the smaller of the 2, right. Because if R 2 t is less than R 1 t, then I am multiplying R 2 t by a uh, number less than 1. So, the whole product is still less than R 2 t, right. Similarly, if R 1 t is the minimum of the 2, then I am multiplying R 1 t by a number which is less than 1 and therefore, the product is again less than R 1 t. So, essentially what we are saying is that the reliability uh, is that uh, the function R t here again I should use uh, small t. So, R t is less than or equal to minimum of this. So, that means, uh, the reliability goes down, right. If you have components in uh, uh, are, uh, hooked up in series, then the reliability of the system goes down, right, because this is less than or equal to minimum of the two. So, uh, whatever the numbers, the two, two numbers here, uh, this will be uh, R t will be smaller than the minimum of the two numbers okay, uh, at any time t. Right. Now, um, uh, one can now generalize this result and to say that uh, if n components functioning independently are connected in series and if the ith component has reliability r i t, 
then the reliability R t, I have this habit of writing capital T, I do not know, then reliability R t of the system is given by the product of the individual reliabilities, because we are assuming that the function, uh, the components are functioning independent of, independently of the other components. Okay. So, therefore, you have this general formula and you see the moment you have uh, the uh, components hooked up in series, uh, as many components, the lower the reliability, because you require all of them to be functioning uh, for the system to function. Okay. Uh, now, consider the case when n is equal to 2 and the failure law for the ith component is uh, exponential. Okay. So, then your uh, reliability uh, for the uh, system and two components will be e raised to minus alpha 1 t into e raised to minus alpha 2 t, which is uh, this is e raised to minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t and uh, your therefore, the p d f uh, for the system uh, for the failure time of the system would be minus r prime t, which is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 e raise to minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t. So, this is negative exponential with parameter alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So, again just repeating what we, we have already learned that if you have uh, uh, two, uh, comp two exponential uh, distributions uh, and the corresponding random variables are independent, then uh, the um, the sum would be, uh, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, no, here we are asking for, yeah, you are uh, taking the. Uh, so, the p d f becomes negative exponential, uh, where the parameters get added up. So, this is exponential, uh, in essentially this is, al huh, so I have written it down here, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 into e raise to minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t. So, this is what happens, if you have two components and both are exponentially, uh, uh, both have the failure law. Uh, exponential failure law and they are functioning independently. Then for the system, if you want to make the computation for the reliability, then it will be with the parameters added up. So, it will be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t and e raise to minus this and the p d f for the um, uh, time to failure for the system would be exponential a negative exponential distribution with parameters alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Right. Uh, yeah, so now we can look at some more examples, and then we will look at uh, some more uh, uh, another kind of system, which is when you have uh, uh, components arranged in parallel. I have taken this example, uh, you know, uh, from a book which got published since 1961. So this is Bazuski Reliability Theory and Practice, Prentice Hall. So maybe the book is not available now, but I have basically chosen the example because you know these figures are not easily available. You know, the uh, failure rate for a silicon transistor, composition transistor and so on. So, just for that reason and, and I wanted to show you the numbers, because you see uh, uh, what we are saying here is, okay, so let me read out the uh, problem first. So, you consider an electronic circuit consisting of four uh, silicon transistors, uh, 10 silicon diodes, 20 composition resistors and 10 ceramic capacitors in uh, continuous series operation. So, they are all hooked up in series okay. and uh, suppose under certain stress conditions that is prescribed voltage, current and temperature, each of the items has the following constant failure rate. So, that means the failure law is exponential. Okay. So, for silicon diodes, it is in hours. So, the um, uh, your parameter is 0 0.00002. That means, if you convert this into uh, that means the mean mean failure time mean, mean failure time will be how much 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so you see you'll have to write 1 0. 0.00002 so it's a very fairly large number so this uh, exactly so uh, i thought that since uh, you know uh, bazuski has somewhere got this data from and so we can use it and actually the example appears in uh, Meyer's book, which for which the reference I will give you at the end of the uh, lecture. So anyway, so the uh, the the mean failure time is you know millions of hour, uh, hours will be there, right? Uh, two, four, six, yes. Okay. So thousands of hours you can say. Fine. So similarly, uh, these are the various numbers. Uh, so the parameters that means each has a uh, 
um, exponential failure law follows exponential failure law and we are assuming that they are um, <coughs> hooked up uh, they are, they are, they are a failure I mean they are functioning independent of each other. So, therefore, um, just now as we saw that we just add up the uh, uh, parameters to get the uh, distribution for the uh, the parameter for the um, uh, for the failure law for the whole uh, system and uh, that will also be exponential we just saw right it can be easily shown that uh, of course i showed it to you for two but the same thing will easily can be shown for any number of so if you have a, a lot of components many components hooked up in series each is following an exponential uh, failure law then the um, when you look up at the uh, failure law for the whole system then that will be simply again exponential with the parameters added up so you have um, <coughs> how many uh, you have uh, 10 silicon diodes and so the uh, parameter is this so therefore 10 times uh, the parameter for the silicon diodes then silicon transistors there are four of them uh, four silicon transistors so four times uh, this parameter which is 0 0.0001 plus 20 times you have 20 composition transistors. So, this 20 times this plus 10 ceramic capacitors 10 times this. So, the um, parameter for the exponentially distributed see the uh, time to failure for the entire circuit uh, is exponentially distributed and the parameter will be equal to <coughs> since there are 4 of them. So, 10 into would see the numbers are given to you. So, this adds up to 0 0.001. So, earlier in the computation I had written 4 zeros, but actually when you do the uh, addition multiplication and addition it will come out to be 0 0.001. So, that is your mu okay. and thus for a 10 hour period of operation the probability that the circuit will not fail will be e raise to minus uh, mu into 10. So, mu 10 right. So, the time period whatever the time period the parameter gets multiplied by that for the corresponding parameter during that period. So, e raise to minus 0 0.0001 into 10, which is e raise to minus 0 0.001. So, the final answer was given correctly, which is 0 0.999 and therefore, your E t will be 10,000 hours. So, therefore, probability is very high obviously, because these uh, these diodes and capacitors have lifetime mean lifetime in thousands of hours. So, obviously, for 10 hour period you do not expect uh, the system to fail. So, the probability is very high. So, therefore, we would expect the system to uh, with high probability the system will continue to function for 10 hours without any failure. This is the idea. Okay. Yeah. So, again you may say simple examples, but just to drive home the point that this is a kind of um, things you can consider. Now, uh, other system that we would like to consider is a parallel system. So, here the um, um, system fails to function only if the of all the components fail. So, you know so di diagrammatically you can depict this for two components. If you have uh, the components uh, arranged in parallel then you see it is like this. So, uh, the input comes and then you have either it can go this way or it can go this way. So, uh, the system will fail to function only if both of them fail right. Because as long as one of them is functioning the things can be the input can will go this if this fails then this will go, go this way and then it will go out this way. So, still the uh, operation will be performed and if this fails then it will go this way and so the operation will be still be performed. So, therefore, uh, for the system to fail both of them have to fail right. So, that is what we mean when we say that all the components have to fail okay. and uh, again uh, under, under independence. So, if we are saying that they function independent of each other and that is what is expected. If you have in parallel then the each component to functions uh, parallelly independently of the other. So, then if you want to compute the uh, I do not know why I keep writing capital T here. So, this is uh, if you want to compute the reliability for the system then this is probability t greater than t which is 1 minus probability t less than or equal to t. So, then in that case um, uh, this is what you want that 1 minus probability t 1 less than or equal to t and t 2 less than or e less than or equal to t right. Both of them should not be functioning by time t. So, therefore, um, because of independence you write this as the product right and therefore, 
uh, this becomes so probability t 1 less than or equal to t is 1 minus r 1 t right, because r 1 t is probability t 1 greater than t. So, this will be 1 minus r 1 t into 1 minus r 2 t. Okay. And now, when you open out, uh, you multiply the two terms and then you get this and so uh, this reduces to r 1 t, because 1 minus 1 uh, cancels out r 1 t plus r 2 t minus r 1 t into r 2 t. So, this is the expression for the and of course, uh, uh, so once we get this expression which I can write, because 1 cancels with the minus 1. So, you will be left with r 1 t plus r 2 t minus r 1 t r 2 t. Right. Now, you see that this is the probability, this is the reliability for the in, uh, for the two systems, because this is r 1 t into r 2 t and we are assuming that the two system, uh, two systems function independently. So, therefore, you see that this is a number, which is less than r 1 t and r 2 t both. So, uh, considering see for example, r 1 t is larger than r 2 t, then this whole number is bigger than r 1 t. So, if r 1 t is the maximum of r 2 and r 1, then this number, this whole number, because r 2 minus r 1 t, r 2 t is something non-negative and therefore, r 1 t plus something non-negative, this is going to come out to be. And hence, I can immediately conclude. So, that is what I have written that since r 1 t, r 2 t is less than or equal to both r 1 t and comma r 2 t. Therefore, it follows that your reliability, when you have um, System two components uh, working uh, uh, in parallel. <coughs> See, I have shown you that the two systems are working in parallel. So, in that case, the uh, reliability of the system become is greater than or equal to max of the reliability of the two components. Okay, and so that so that immediately shows that. Uh, systems composed of components functioning independently in parallel, the reliability <coughs> will be higher than the reliability of the of each of the components that are in parallel. Right. And so, uh, uh, parallel components are often used to increase reliability. And uh, if you want to now generalize it to n components, which are uh, functioning in parallel, then this will be uh, r t into uh, 1 minus of 1 minus r 1 t into 1 minus r 2 t into 1 minus r n t. So, the same principle will be used and you can show that. Uh, so, uh, this is the important thing that when two uh, components. So, that means, here we are considering the case when two components are working in parallel right, and the system has to fail only when both of them fail, because all components have to fail. In that case, the reliability of the system will be greater than or equal to reliability of both the components. So, therefore, uh, you know working in uh, parallel uh, having uh, components in parallel and having components in series. So, this is the basic uh, comp the way you make up the devices and then you can as I said you can decompose them and uh, you know uh, into smaller these things where you can con consider uh, co uh, components arranged in parallel and components arranged in series, then put them together. So, I will try to show you some more examples of uh, you know systems, uh, you know uh, uh, system of components arranged in different orders. Okay. So, let us see, uh, take to, um, consider the example where two components are in parallel and each of whose failure law is exponential distribution, right. And of course, we are assuming that the first component has parameter alpha 1, the other one has alpha 2, then the reliability of the system and since they are in parallel. So, the reliability is given by the formula we just obtained r 1 t plus r 2 t minus r 1 t into r 2 t, because they are functioning independent of each other. Okay. And therefore, uh, this will be your uh, reliability function. Okay. And then uh, the e t, uh, the expected time to failure for the system would be, because you know, uh, when you take the expectation, you will be integrating each of them separately. This t into d t, this t into d t, the integral of this 0 to infinity t into this, each of them is exponential distribution. So, it will be 1 upon alpha 1 plus 1 upon alpha 2 minus 1 upon alpha 1 plus alpha 2. And you can now, since you have the whole machinery with you, you can do all any computation that you want to do. Once you know the functional form of the uh, you know of the, of the uh, reliability function, you can com make these computations. Okay. Uh, now, again just to drive home the point that uh, 
uh, parallel uh, uh, arrangements of components definitely increase the reliability of the system. And I have taken this example from uh, Meyer's book, which again is a very old one, but a very good one. And uh, so, uh, the, see the thing is that, uh, yes. So, uh, anyway, I have just given the reference. I will give you the reference, but the book may not be uh, easily available. Okay, does not matter. Uh, suppose, three units are operated in parallel. Okay. Assume that each has the same constant failure rate alpha equal to 0 0.01. So, they are identical components. So, all have the exponential um, uh, failure law, follow the exponential failure law with parameter 0 0.01. Right. Now, hence uh, reliability of each unit for a period of 10 hours is e raise to minus 0 0.01 into 10, which is e raise to minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.905 or about 90 percent. So, if each uh, component is functioning uh, you know by itself, then the reliability is uh, for in 10 hours period that it will not fail is uh, uh, you know uh, 90 percent. Okay. Now, how much of an improvement can be achieved in terms of increasing reliability of the system by operating three such units in parallel. Hmm. And so, by our formula this is of course, I am not looking at the expanded form. This is 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 1 minus p uh, probability of t less than t raised to 3. So, that is what will it be. Right? Uh, this is what you see that I got after opening up the brackets, but if you do not do it, uh, see this this whole thing you wrote as 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus r 1 t into 1 minus r 2 t. So, this was the formula, which right, which then we opened up and then the 1 1 got cancelled and so on. So, I am just and since they are identical, so it will be the same function. So, it will be 1 minus r 1 t square. So, in, in our case it will be uh, cube right. And so, this is 1 minus 0 0.905, uh, because r you know, this came out to be 0 0.905. So, 1 minus of that raised to 3 and that comes out to be this and therefore, uh, this is equal to 0.99914 and therefore, the reliability has gone up to 99.9 percent. Okay. So, the numbers drive home the point and that is why it is important uh, that you know uh, individually if you just had one component in the system, then for uh, the probability of its operating for 10 hours would be only 90 percent. Uh, you expect 90 percent of the time it will be functioning still um, uh, at the end of 10 hours period. But if you um, have three in parallel, then you will almost be sure that the uh, device with three parallel components will still be functioning uh, 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 at the end of 10 hour period. Right. So, this is the idea and therefore, the reliability can be improved upon, but as I said that um, uh, it has to be versus reliability versus cost, reliability versus the volume of the device and so on. So, you cannot just go on having uh, components in parallel. Okay. Now, see the thing is that um, as I was saying that I discussed the very basic uh, uh, arrangements for you, basic systems and uh, you can have things like uh, you know series parallel. So, you have these three components here in series, these three components in series and then parallel. So, there is no problem because you can compute the reliability for this and for this and then you know how to compute the reliability for the parallel, because when the two are parallel. So, you just have to uh, uh, you know iteratively uh, do this arrangement, you compute this, which will be the product and this will be the product and then it will be um, you know 1 minus of. So, what we have been doing so far. right? Similarly, if you have a arrangement uh, parallel and series, then these are parallel. So, you can compute the reliability of this, you can compute the reliability of this. So, this will be form your r 1 and this form your r 2 and then you are doing it in series. So, that is what I meant that uh, all uh, complex devices can be broken up into um, you know whether uh, either they are series parallel, parallel series and so on and then you want to come put them together. So, most of the time you should be able to come up with a reasonable uh, functional form for the reliability of the, of, um, of, of the whole uh, device. And you know the things can just and uh, of course, I will be discussing a few um, problems like this uh, in the exercise, which will follow. So, that exercise uh, on uh, problems related to whatever we have discussed about 
reliability theory. So, let me give you the references that are the books that I have been referring to uh, all along in this course. And yes, I agree that uh, some of them are out of print, but in any case, the idea is that um, uh, even though uh, like this is a 76 edition and uh, that one is 71 edition, uh, of course, Hillier and Lieberman eighth edition has just come out and I think even the ninth one may be ready. But so anyway, uh, the thing is and to get the basic material, I had to refer to these uh, old books, uh, but so, uh, certainly substitutes will be there and now a lot of material is available on the net. So, you just have to type the word that you would want uh, whatever subject matter you want and lot of things come out. So, therefore, but in any case I just want to uh, 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 refer to these books, because I have used material from the, uh, these books. So, the first one is introduction to probability models 10th edition by Sheldon Ross. Uh, this is Elsevier academic press and this I think is a 2010 edition and maybe uh, see th this one will keep coming out with new editions. So, therefore, no problem getting a copy of this book. Operations research principle and practice Don T. Phillips, A. Ravindran and James Solberg. This is a 76 book, but some treatments are some topics have been treated very well. And so, um, uh, I have used lot of examples of all from here and I have or whenever I use figures, I have referred to uh, that part also. Okay. So, this is a 76 book. Then uh, introduction to operations research by Hillier and Lieberman, 8th edition, McGraw Hill and yes, okay, I do not remember the edition uh, for this particular year, but this has been coming out with new uh, editions. So, therefore, no problem and this is a McGraw Hill. So, cheap edition uh, should be available uh, easily. Okay. And the fourth one that I have used uh, is introductory probability and statistical applications, second edition. Paul Meyer. Again, this is a classic book and uh, very neatly and simply uh, the material has been presented. So, the reliability theory portion, I have used this book and this is an Edison Wesley 1971 book. So, in any case, uh, this is what uh, my sources were and now uh, you can, as I told you, Google search for any uh, subject matter that you need and I hope you get interested enough in the topic to read more. Okay. Now, let me just discuss the last exercise, exercise 11 with you, uh, which is on uh, based on uh, probability theory. Yeah, let us just look at question 1. Suppose that uh, t, the time to failure of an item is normally distributed with E t as 90, that is mu hours and standard deviation 5 hours. In order to achieve uh, reliability of 0 0.9, 0 0.95 and 0 0.99, how many hours of operation may be considered. So, now you know the reliability function. Uh, this is uh, uh, 1 minus phi of t minus mu upon sigma. right? So, this would be, so if you have, for example, you put it equal to 0 0.9 and you know, uh, you, you do not know mu uh, or is it, uh, mu is given to you, sigma is also given to you. So, now, but from the normal tables, you are looking for phi t minus mu, I have done problems with you like this, is equal to 0 0.01, right? Uh, or sorry, <laughs> 0 0.1, uh, 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. Okay. So, then given mu and sigma, you can look up the tables and uh, for corresponding to 0 0.1, what is the value here and then corresponding value of t will be available. So, similarly, when you put 0 0.95, 0 0.99, you can accordingly get the uh, values of t. Okay. So, how many hours of operation may be considered? So, you can answer for all the three values of the uh, reliability uh, level. Okay. Question 2. Suppose that the life length of an electronic device is exponentially distributed. It is known that the reliability of the device for a 100 hour period of operation is 0 0.9. Okay. How many hours of operation may be considered to achieve a reliability of 0 0.95? So, first your the, the first data that is given to you, you will compute the uh, parameter for the uh, exponentially uh, for the exponential uh, failure law and then uh, once you get the uh, alpha, then you can compute the time for corresponding to the uh, reliability level of 0 0.95. Okay. Uh, question 3, suppose that the life length of a device has constant failure rate c naught for 0 less than t less than t naught and a different constant failure rate C 1 
or t greater than or equal to t naught. Obtain the PDF of t, the time to failure and sketch it. The sketching part I will leave to you, but see here all that is saying is that you have, uh, so up to t naught you have one uh, failure law and then you for after t naught you have another failure law. So, uh, therefore, um, but at the point t naught the two must, must meet. Right. So, therefore, uh, you what you will say is that c naught. So, uh, you see the required density function will be c naught e raised to minus c naught t as long as t is between 0 and t naught, because this is the failure law. So, the rate of failure is c naught and it is exponential failure uh, law. So, therefore, for the t less than or equal to t naught that means, lying between 0 and t naught you will write this and for t greater than t naught it will be c 1 e raise to minus c naught t naught plus. So, this is e raise to I should yeah and then you see c 1 t naught minus t. So, since t is greater than t naught. So, uh, when you write it as t minus t naught then it will be minus here. So, anyway. So, this is uh, now uh, this will be the probability density function. So, to show that f t is a p d f we have to show that its integral from 0 to infinity would be equal to 1 and in particular. So, the first part we will integrate from 0 to t naught and the second part of the function f t we will integrate from t naught to infinity and therefore, uh, the calculation shows that the integral comes out to be equal to 1. So, this is the required p d f right for question 3 and then uh, you can try to uh, sketch it. Suppose that the failure rate z is given by, so now uh, 4 is a special case of 3. So, here um, your uh, time between 0 and a. Uh, the failure rate is 0 and for t greater than a it is c. So, it is constant right. So, again it is the same thing as 3 except that now your c naught is 0 and uh, uh, for c 1 is c right and uh, uh, so therefore, you can because we have obtained the form for the um, failure law in 3. So, now just substituting the special values you can compute uh, uh, you can compute uh, the, uh, so the uh, ok let me just see. Okay. So, here uh, you have to find the p d f associated with t the time to failure. So, that you can find out because I have already obtained it for you and now you have to put in the values of c naught and c and of course, your t naught is a and evaluate e t. So, then you can also evaluate by actual integration. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, uh, question 5. Suppose that the failure law of a component has the following p d f. So, this is uh, f t is r plus 1 into a r plus 1 divided by a plus t uh, raised to r plus 2 t greater than 0. Right. Okay. So, um, for what values of a and r is the above a p d f? We can look at it, uh, I can look at the. Um, so, uh, uh, suppose that the failure law of a component has the following question 5. Uh, suppose that the failure law of a component has the following p d f uh, f t is r plus 1 into a raise to r plus 1 divided by a plus t raise to r plus 2 t greater than 0. So, it should not be difficult because all you have to do is to and so you have to say that uh, for what values of a and r is the above a p d f and I think uh, if, uh, uh, if my uh, this thing is right then uh, it really does not matter it is a p d f for all a and r because you see you simply have to write the integral as a plus t raise to r minus r minus 2 and then integrate uh, from 0 to infinity. Okay. And then uh, you just have to, I think the values of a will cancel out and, uh, uh, and r will. So, you will get the integral as equal to 1 uh, with, without specifying any values for a and r. Anyway, so now you can do this and then you can obtain an expression for the reliability function and hazard function and show that the hazard function is decreasing in t. Okay. So, I will let you do this problem. Okay. Now, uh, question 6. Suppose that the failure law of a component is a linear combination of k exponential uh, failure laws. That is the p d f of the failure time is given by um, f t is equal to sigma j varying from 1 to k c j beta j e raise to minus beta t t and beta j beta j for all j is uh, positive. Right. So, for what values of c j is the above a p d f. 
So, now when you integrate, because this is a finite sum, so I can take the integral inside, right. And so, when you integrate um, uh, beta j integration integral of 0 to infinity beta j e raise to minus beta, uh, it should be, uh, oh, there is a missing. Yeah, let me write it down. I think your f t should be, sorry, yeah, this happens, the uh, typing errors take creep in. So, this is j varying from 1 to k and this is c j uh, beta j e raise to minus beta j t, right. This is for t greater than 0 and beta j greater than 0 for all j. So, this is beta j, okay, make the correction, right. And so, when you integrate this from 0 to infinity d t, you will be integrating all separate ones. This is 0 to t d t, right. Yeah. So, uh, therefore, now this is equal to 1. So, therefore, this whole thing will add up to sigma c j, j varying from 1 to k. So, this is the condition that all uh, and of course, c j's have to be non-negative uh, and then you say that sigma uh, c j, well actually it is a linear combination. So, um, um, I will just to be on the safe side say that c j's be non-negative and they add up to 1. So, in that case, so this, this becomes a convex combination in that case of all these uh, uh, different exponential laws and so, this is also again uh, an, uh, a pdf, this will be a pdf, right. Okay. Then oh, obtain an expression for the reliability function and hazard function, obtain an expression for the mean time to failure. So, uh, see here again because it is a summation, so you will have to integrate if you have to compute uh, this integral the same principle you will use for the reliability thing you will have to. So, r t when you do t to infinity. So, you again can integrate separately and so it will be a convex combination of all the separate reliability functions right r 1 up r 2 r k. So, it will be c 1 r 1 plus c 2 r 2 plus c k r k. So, straightforward. this is not uh, right and uh, then answer b and c if beta j is equal to beta for all j and of course, obtain an expression for the mean time to failure. So, the mean time to failure would be um, see for each of them it is 1 by beta j. So, it would be summation. So, the mean time to failure that means your E t will be summation C j beta j j varying from 1 to k. Okay. Now, let us go to the next problem. Then, uh, uh, question 7, expected lifetime is 3 by 2 years. So, which means that lambda is 2 by 3, again exponential uh, failure law, right. And uh, probability that it is still functioning after 2 years will be e raise to minus. So, it will be e raise to minus lambda t, which is uh, minus 4 by 3 after 2 years. So, this will be e raise to minus 4 by 3. Now, you want the probability that 2 still functioning after 2 years. So, 2 still functioning after 2 years at least. Uh, so, that means, uh, you, you, you may have after 2 years either 2 of them are functioning or 3 of them. So, when 2 of them are functioning, it will be 3 c 2 e raise to minus 4 by 3 into 2, because 2 of them are functioning and 1 of them is not functioning. So, it will be 1 minus e raise to minus 4 by 3 and or you have all 3 of them functioning. So, it will be e raise to minus 4 by 3 into 3. That means, here this is, so actually this will be e raise to minus 12 by 3. So, this, this will be the required probability. Now, this figure refers to problem 8, I think. Three independently functioning components are connected into a single system as indicated in figure above. Okay. So, two are parallel and then one is series. Suppose that reliability for each of the components for an operational period of t hours is given by uh, e raise to minus 0.03 t. So, now uh, by now we have discussed all this. So, therefore, you have to treat these two as parallel. So, then uh, you co compute the reliability of this component and then this together with this component C 3 uh, uh, in series. So, now you can do it, right. You will have to first, and they are all identically distributed, the failure laws for the three components. So, therefore, you first compute these two uh, in parallel, right, okay, and then it will be, um, so which will be, uh, I have given you the formula for this, and then that into C 3. So, that will be, uh, you know, 
multiplication right. So, you can do that and let us see what else is asked. So, if t is the time to failure of the entire system, what is the pdf of t that you can find out? Uh, well, you will first find out the reliability function or you can try to find the pdf directly. What is the reliability of the system? How it compares with e raise to 0 0.03 t. So, obviously, I think uh, even your guess should be that it will definitely improve the reliability, because there are two components in parallel. Okay. So, definitely and uh, even though, uh, uh, okay, okay. see the thing is that the reliability of this component consisting of C 1 and C 2 will go up, right? but uh, C 3 will have the same. And since, when you take the, uh, the combination in series, when you hook them up in series, then your reliability is the minimum of the two. So, therefore, uh, you cannot say much, it will almost be the same. In fact, it will not be better than e raise to 0 point minus 0 0.03 t. Okay, okay. In fact, it will not be better than e raise to 0 point minus 0 0.03 t. Okay, okay. Yeah, now I have given you a big system here. So, this is, uh, so suppose that uh, n components are hooked up in a series arrangement, then k such series connections are hooked up in parallel to form an entire system. So, see the figure below is given. If each component has the same reliability say r for a certain period of operation, find an expression for the reliability of the entire system for that same period of operation. So, you should enjoy doing it. Just sit down, patiently write down the first for this series connection, you write the reliability function for this and this. It will be the same and then you do the parallel thing. Okay. So, there are k in parallel and uh, you have how many n in series. So, just patiently sit down and you can write down the reliable expression for the reliability function for the whole uh, system, you should be able to do it. Okay. Yeah, so, now I am saying that suppose that each of the above component obey an exponential failure law with failure rate 0 0.05. Suppose furthermore that the time of operation is 10 hours and that n is 5. So, now I have given you the numbers and determine the value of k in order that the reliability of the entire system equals 0 0.99. So, you will enjoy doing this problem, because uh, so k is not given to you, so, but then when you write down the reliability function, it will be a function of k and then you put the value uh, for 10 hours. right? So, your t is 10 hours, so then you substitute that in the expression and put the whole thing equal to 0 0.99 then you will get the value of k. So, real interesting problem, I am sure you will enjoy doing it. Now, a component has reliability 0 0.9 when used for a particular purpose. Component B, which may be used in place of component A, has a reliability of only 0 0.75. Okay. So, A has reliability of uh, 0 0.9 uh, in a, for a certain uh, period and component B, which may be used in place of component A has a reliability only 0 0.75. So, what is the minimum number of components of type B that would have to be hooked up in parallel? So, now you can write down the reliability function. Suppose, you take um, k number of B components and you hook them up in parallel, you know the reliability function right? and then you want to say that its reliability should be equal to 0 0.9. So, that also again you can using the formula that I have given you for uh, uh, computing the reliability when they are hooked up in parallel then uh, and you know 0 0.75 reliability of one component, then how many should be there? So, that the reliability goes up to 0 0.9. So, these are the kind of questions which I am sure you will uh, Okay, that is it. So, okay, so, I think uh, uh, this, this is the last lecture and uh, effort has been made to uh, acquaint you with probability theory, basic, basic probability theory I would say and then uh, uh, its applications and uh, I have tried to through exercises, uh, try to give you a good insight into the uh, subject and I hope you enjoy doing these exercises. Okay.